Hey, what's up guys? It's Dan Din here and in anticipation of the season four changes, I just want to do a quick mastery run through for the just all the trees and just really take a quick look at what the masteries are, uh, which ones are good and which ones aren't that good and in which situation you would choose one over the other. So um, to start off, I looked at all the trees for different roles basically. I looked at it as an AP caster, as an AV carry, a jungler, a utility support, and a tank. Um, just start off in the first tree as a caster. You know, if you look at the first tier, you have double edged sword on the far left. And let me just quickly explain what double edged sword is. It basically makes it so you deal more damage, but you also receive more damage. <laughs> And depending on whether you're melee or range, the numbers are slightly different. Because being a melee, um, you're more prone to taking more damage, kiting. So generally, melee champions have a lot more hit point. And so to compensate for that, double-edged sword is more effective for melee champions. It deals more damage, and uh, you receive only 1% versus 1.5% as range. So as a range champion, you're going to be doing 1.5% more damage and receiving 1.5% damage. So it's, um, the numbers are tweaked in a way where it's more beneficial for a melee champion because of that. Um, the reason why you would want to take double-edged sword would be one, it makes you last hit better in lane. And two, it promotes better uh, laning and more outplaying in the laning process or laning phase because um, it's always going to make you think, okay, when can I deal damage? And minimize the damage that I'm going to take myself. So um, I, I like the aspect of promoting better gameplay, better laning, and really, you know, I think the the 1.5 percent or 2 percent, depending on which one you are, melee or range, um, really does help out in the last hitting. Uh, moving on to the next mastery is Fury. Um, this is something you would worry more as an AD carry. Uh, AD carry generally would really like the attack speed. You get 5% with 4 points. Um, the only time you really don't want to get Fury and would trade it for um, the next one over, which is Sorcery, is say if you're an Ezreal, uh, an AD caster, which spams a lot of ability. Because as an ADC, you're going to be spending a lot of times auto attacking. But in this case, we're working on AP caster. So um, as an AP caster, cooldown reduction is probably one of the most important stats you can get uh, is a quick way to increase your damage uh, so this is basically a must-have of any of the mastery in the bottom tier uh, sorcerer is probably the strongest one that you can get as a caster moving on to the next one is butcher or uh, yeah butcher it's basically what it was before you just deal more damage to minions and monsters Instead of having two points back in Season 3, Season 4 is going to be down to one point, And you're going to be doing two extra damage. I really like Butcher on most casters mid because the extra damage you get from Butcher, once again, it goes back to last hitting in lane. Um, the better you are or uh, the more damage you do from auto attacks, the more likely you're going to take those last hits. And last hitting without spam abilities makes it so you save mana one. And two, uh, you can freeze lane and not push it. <coughs> Moving down below Butcher, I think is a really good master as well as Feast. Um, just really only auto attacking those creeps to last hit. Uh, it promotes, well, Feast promotes you last hitting creeps a lot more because now you're, not only are you getting the gold, you're going to be regenerating two hit points and one mana. So each wave you go into, uh, there's usually six if there's no cannon minions. So you're going to be regenerating around 12 hit point and 6 mana. So that, it's not a lot. Uh, but in the long run, that 12 health, that 6 mana is going to add up. And really it's going to extend um, your ability to stay in lane. So I really like Feast. For only a 1 point, I feel like you'd get um, quite a bit out of it. The next one is over is Mental Force. Um, there's no real immediate benefit because there's a scaling ability power per level. It used to be 18 ability power at level 18, now it's 16. So 
I think it used to be a four point mastery too. So with it only being three point, is actually a slight buff. Um, I would still get this as a caster, having that extra AP as you scale up helps out. Um, once again, you get no immediate benefit uh, at the lower levels. So this is more of I'm getting this because it's going to be useful late game. Uh, one thing that it does scale into, and the biggest reason why you would want to get it, uh, is Arcane Mastery. Because Arcane Mastery is such a huge AP boost at level 1, it makes it so Mental Force is one of those masteries that you really want to get so you can break on through the next tier. Uh, if you jump back up a tier, you look at Espo's weakness. Each time you damage an enemy with an ability or a spell, um, then for the next 3 seconds they're going to be taking 1% uh, more damage. I am on the fence for Espo's weakness. In the early laning phase, um, there's no real benefit <laughs> because a lot of times you're going in, you're doing an auto attack and you're spamming an ability and you back out. And so what Exposed Weakness does is it's more beneficial to champions that does a quick 1-2 or a 1-2-3. Like if you're a Rise, you go up, you do a Overload, a Rune Prison, and uh, the Chain, I forgot what it's called, but... Uh, if you spam more than one ability, now Exposed Weakness is really good. But if you're only going in for one nuke and you're backing out, Exposed Weakness isn't really that strong. But it does help out as you get later in the game because now um, with Exposed Weakness, you're buffing it for everybody on your team. And if multiple people on your team has it, uh, you can make sure that it's always available and that 1% damage is always up. Uh, moving down, uh, well, I'm going to talk a little bit about Brute Force. It's just basically flat attack damage. Um, we've seen this back in Season 3. Uh, same deal, as an AP caster, you don't need Brute Force, so I'm going to skip over that. Um, breaking down into the third tier, we have Spell Weaving. I intentionally didn't get this because Spell Weaving, I feel like as a caster, you're going to be doing a lot of auto attacks. You're going to do, be doing more auto attacks. However, um, it's not going to be enough, especially in a team fight where it's effective. I feel like it's one of those things where as an AD carry, you're more likely to take it over other things because the trade-off isn't bad. <laughs> and so, and uh, another thing with spell weaving is because each time you attack an enemy with an auto attack, they take more magic damage. Is going to promote you to keep on auto attacking enemies. Uh, that could be a good and a bad thing. The good thing is, is uh, it's going to teach you to know when to go in to do those auto attacks to maximize your damage. Bad thing is, is that it might make you want to do more auto attacks than you should. And each time you auto attack an enemy, um, it's going to pull creep aggro and it's going to push the lane. Sometimes you don't want to push the lane. So depending on the champion you may or may not opt to get spell weaving. It's not one of those spells where it's a must have or it's so bad that you don't want to get. Um, spell weaving is more for those champions where if they're a ranged caster that has really long range that can throw in those auto attacks in between casts and farming, it's not that bad. Uh, you may get it on champions like Lux or Annie with really good attack animation and really good attack range. Uh, in those cases, then it's beneficial. Other than that, if you are like a Cassidin or any shorter range AP mid that just really puts yourself in danger when you go into auto attack, I wouldn't necessarily take spell weaving. In this case, I actually omitted it because uh, for the majority of casters, I, I feel like it's just not that beneficial. You move over into the next one. This is more for the AD. It goes from the brute force, so I'm going to talk more about it later. Um, moving on to Arcane oh I talked about Arcane Mastery uh, the last ability in this uh, third tier is Executioner um, it's more like the 21 point from season 3 uh, basically at rank 1 if an enemy is below 20% health uh, you're going to be doing 5% more damage so you're going to be hitting harder when they're lower hit point and as you rank it up it approaches 50% when you hit rank 3. So I didn't really... I think Executioner is pretty good depending on the champion. 
Um, it's one of those abilities where it's not super reliable because you have to chip them down first before you finish them. It's nice to have it uh, when you're trying to burst down an enemy because a lot of times as a caster, you're throwing down your short cooldown nukes uh, to chip. So throughout the entire phase, you're chipping, you're chipping, you're chipping, and then when they're, the, they're really low, then you burst. And so I would still get one point executioner because um, when I unload that big spell at the end, uh, it's going to increase the threshold for when I can burst them down with that last ability to kill them. But uh, for the chipping phase, Executor is not going to help too much until you really breach that 50%, 35%, or 20%. But even but at 35 and 20%, you're no longer really chipping. You're going to go short cooldown, then big cooldown, and hopefully that's enough to kill them. And so I, I still keep one point into it for the burst potential, but uh, it, I don't think it's absolutely necessary for the chipping at 50% or the burst at 50%. Uh, moving now into the fourth tier. Uh, there's blade weaving, which comes from spell weaving. Blade weaving is basically when you deal a spell damage or you cast ability on an enemy, it's going to apply stacks onto them. It stacks three times, and basically if you cast uh, three spells once per second, uh, at the max stacks, they're going to be taking 3% more damage. And so, once again, as an AP mid, you're going to be casting a lot of uh, spells on the enemy, but you're never really going to be going in there and doing a lot of basic attack. And even as a caster mid, like uh, Zed and Talon, you're doing a lot more ability damage from physical damage, more than so from auto attacking. So I feel like spell weaving and blade weaving is a really, really big trap. And it's more for a team fight. If you have a caster that can spam out really, really short cooldown, and you can apply these procs for your allies to do the extra attack, then it's really good. For some reason, I feel like these would be better on the AD carry because they can continually spam it. Like I think it would be good on like Ezreal or something that can keep on spamming physical ability, and he can do auto attacks in the between and just keep those stacks up. Moving on to the next one is just Warlord. Uh, basically, increase your physical attack damage more for the ADC side. So I'm just going to skip this for right now. But basically, it's 2% per level up to 6% at rank 3. <coughs> and one over from that is Archmage. Uh, it increases his durability power by 5%. I think uh, it's actually another one of those uh, masteries that's a must have. For most AP casters, 5% more ability power does translate to quite a bit more damage as you get it. Not necessarily like 5% damage like the other stuff. Like, I, I actually put sorcery higher than Archmage, but ability power is never really bad. Uh, just the, there's no real trade off for it. You would trade Archmage for maybe Executioner, Dangerous Game, or Spell Weaving, Blade Weaving. And really, as a caster, Archmage is just, it's, it's hard to give up. Um, if you move over one more, if you max rank Executioner, you can break into Dangerous Game. What Dangerous Game does is it gives you back mana and HP each time you kill a champion. Um, it's good and bad, because unless you can actually get the kill, Dangerous Game isn't that good. So if you have a champion that can one combo or burst somebody really hard... Um, then Dangerous Game and Executioner is really good. If I was on LeBlanc, I would probably take Executioner because she's one of those champions that bursts from 100 to 0. So breaching that 50% is really easy and she's going to be bursting from that 50%. And she's going to be one-shotting people and so she's going to pick up that kill and she's going to get enough mana and HP back. Well, not enough, but she's going to get that 5% mana and HP. Champions that are prone to getting last hits are good at Dangerous Games. Champions that are good at chipping, doing a lot of damage, but not necessarily securing the kill, I would probably omit Executioner and Dangerous Game. Uh, dropping down a tier, you have Arcane Blade. Basic attack deals uh, bonus magic damage equal to 5% of ability power. It's uh, basically like what it was in Season 3. Um, the more ability power you have, it augments your auto attack with some magic damage making last hitting in lane easier. So 
the reason why I get Arcane Blade is not because as a caster I do a lot of auto attacks uh, mid late game, but more for the last hitting um, in the lane in the early parts of the game. And really, as you get more AP, your auto attack damage also scales. So if you choose to get those last hits by auto attacking and not spamming abilities to save mana in mid and late game, you can do that too. Um, moving over one, you have Devastating Strike. Um, it's 6% armor and magic penetration. Now it's no longer... It basically com combined both magic and armor pen from two different trees into one. Now you can just get it and it works for everything. Uh, I, I really like it because now it makes dual pen champions more viable, like Akali or any champions with like variable damage. Uh, part physical, part magical, like Corky. Devastating Strike is really good for Corky. It's a slight change. Uh, it used to be 8%, depending on which tree you go down, but now it's only 3 points. And you don't have, you're not forced to take that AP or flat damage to get to that last point into it. And now you can just get it for both. And so, um, good and bad. Uh, bad is no longer 8%. It requires 3 points. Good. You don't have to go down a specific tree to take it anymore. But now it's dual pen. And I like that. Uh, one over is Frenzy. I, I, not a lot of people really take this anyways. Uh, in Season 3, we have something similar. Uh, every time you critical strike, you gain attack speed after. Most AD carries omits that. Uh, there's no reason to get it as an AP carry, so it's not necessary. And finally, the last point is Havoc or Havoc. I don't really know. I've heard it pronounced different ways, but it increases your uh, damage by 3%. So once again, uh, really good ability. It just increases your damage overall by 3%. Good for last hitting a lane. So if you're going to go all the way down, you're going to want to get this. It's just 3% damage. In general so it's good for AP it's good for AD it's just good all around um, recap on this tree really quick um, the must-haves or the ones that you really want to have is you want to have sorcery as a caster it's just way too good to give up you want to have mental force just because arcane mastery as a caster is so strong you get the eight ability power uh, early game uh, this is not necessarily is is really good though. I it's borderline necessary for me because that extra two damage just helps you last hit so much more. Uh, you can go into feast too, and there's no real trade off that you can get that is better. So uh, butcher feast is really good. Executioner you can do with or without depending on the champion. You might want to take executioner. Um, depending on the champions, you might not. Uh, you would trade off executioner for uh, spell weaving and blade weaving and if you really want to have these two points uh, you can probably take off some points from archmage and so I feel like everything else isn't too necessary uh, another one that's really good arcane blade once again helps you last hit in lane and devastating strike is just another must have that you have and if you're going to go to 21 points a must have is havoc okay so that pretty much covers the offensive tree for AP casters. And if we move over, there is you have nine points left. And you're going to decide, do I want this in defense or utility? So in the defense and utility, you can't really go past the third tier. So we're only going to look at the first three tiers, uh, which one's good and what's the trade-off. So if you're in lane and you know that you're going to be taking some damage, uh, because a lot of times AP mid, you're not really just farming. You're, you're farming and you're trying to nuke your enemy in between. So any champions that does a lot of auto attack damage uh, in between is really good to get block. I feel like recover is really good. Two hit points per five seconds. Uh, just is so much better than anything else that you can get. I actually would take recovery over block if I had to choose. Uh, there's enchanted armor. Increases your bonus magic. And resist and armor by 2.5. I think it scales up to 5%. Uh, the thing with this is the reason why I don't take it is because it only scales off of bonus magic, uh, bonus armor and magic resist. So if you take flat MR, flat armor, you take you're looking at like 11 and 13 flat, and 5% of that you're getting less than one stat for two points, and so there's there's no point. 
I'd rather take the regeneration. It's gonna help you out after like 10 seconds, way more than enchanted armor, whatever. And as an AP mid, you're never really scaling into a lot of resistance. So you're never gonna get too much benefit from enchanted armor. So this is something you would wanna omit if you're going AP mid. Uh, next one over, reduce damage taken from neutral monster. There's no point. Uh, you're not going to the jungle too much. Once in a while you go in, you'll farm it, but it's more of you go in, you burst it down. It's not you're standing there for an extended amount of time taking damage. So tough skin, uh, not necessary. Bladed armor, not necessary as well. Uh, you go down the next tier, you now have block, you have recovery. There is unyielding, so you're just going to be blocking more damage uh, from enemy champions. So I really like unyielding with block and unyielding. When you get like ganks from junglers or you get auto attack in the early games, uh, it's going to block quite a bit of damage. Veteran Scar, I like the HP pool. You get 12 per level. The HP pool basically provides um, just an extra buffer. Because anytime you get gank as a mid, um, it's not really they're chipping you down. It's you get ganked and they're going to try and burst you. If you don't die, you go back right away. And so, you know, you, you now have a 36 health buffer uh, against getting bursted. And so. The, the threshold from when a jungler can gank you and burst you to kill you is uh, is actually much lower. Or they, they need to take you lower before they can kill you in terms of percentage-wise. Uh, same with Juggernaut. You're looking at 3% maximum health. So now you have a bigger HP pool. Same concept with Veteran Scar. Bigger HP pool means it's harder to burst you from where you're at to zero and get that kill. So hypothetically, in the early game, if you have, say, uh, 500 hit point, you're looking at an extra 15 health. So it's just the same idea as Veteran Scar. And, you know, it's a, it's a scaling uh, mastery. So as you level up, you know, you're getting more health too. So I think Juggernaut is just a really good ability. Um, so the trade-off is, and the last point, you can either go anywhere. I've already established that these three are pretty useless as an AP mid. You can get a point in magic resist, point in armor, or a point in oppression. Um, you don't really need the armor or magic resist. I'd rather get the percent health. Like I, This is just way too much better than these two. Uh, the thing with oppression right here is, uh, the thing that gets me is it reduces damage by 3%. It sounds really good, but they have to be slowed, snared, taunted, or stunned. If they are snared, okay, chance of them hitting you is not likely. You can keep them out of range and you can nuke them. If they're taunted, usually any champion with a taunt usually has like a shield or is just really tanky to begin with. And so this just doesn't make sense as a caster. Um, and especially with a stun, if you're going to stun somebody, they're not going to be hitting you anyways. Imagine like a Ramus rolls up to you, he taunts you, he has defensive ball curl, so, um, oppression, I feel like it's just, it's such a weird mastery. It doesn't make sense. It can be good if you have like a Rylize or something, um, so you can continue to apply it, but outside of that, if you're on a champion that can really apply CC, snares, slows all the time. Oppression, I, I can't see it being that useful. Um, so that's if you go into the nine points in defense. Let's take a look at the utility tree really quick. There is phase walker. Uh, basically, we have this in season three too. Uh, it just makes you recall one second faster. Um, I really like phase walker, but I'm not going down in the utility tree right now. There's fleet foot. This is actually a really good uh, mastery as well. If I'm going to go into Utility, I take Fleet Foot. And there's Meditation. Uh, oh, man. So the thing with Fleet Foot and Meditation is this. Okay, Meditation gives you mana. means you can spam more abilities. This, you can kite. You can dodge. If I'm against like a Gragas Orianna, I might want to take Fleet Foot. The extra movement speed will help me dodge the barrels and the ball a lot easier. When you're against skill shot champions, having movement speed is really good because now not only can you run away faster, you can dodge the abilities a lot easier. So the chance of you getting hit is lower. So if you have a really high skill cap and you can react quickly, fleet foot's really good. But if you know you're going to take free damage uh, and you have good pokes, 
uh, you might want to offer meditation because it goes into strength of spirit. Because if you have a big uh, mana pool too, now you're regenerating a lot of the HP. So uh, depending on the situation, you might choose one over the other. But in general, I like Fleetfoot more than meditation and strength of spirit combo. Um, Scout, I'm not sure on the effectiveness of Trinkets yet. So um, I'm going to have to hold a reservation on that. And then if you go into Summer Insight, um, just reduces your Summer Spells. It goes up to 10%, same as Season 3. And then Runic Affair, uh, Vampirism, Culinary Master, or Greed. I generally like Runic Affair if I know my jungler is going to give me the buff all the time. But if it's not reliable, I feel like Biscuit is just, or the Culinary Master is just really strong. If you start off with like Boots for Pots now, now you all suddenly get an extra 40 mana from the four pots and an extra 80 health from the health pots too. So it's just going to help you stay in lane for a lot longer. So uh, recap, if you know you're going to be getting buffs regularly, Runic Affair is not bad. If you're starting like boots for pots now, Culinary Master is really good if you know you're not going to be getting the buffs. So that's my trade-off. But in general, I feel like I would get the nine points in defense. So... Um, that's just a quick run through on my uh, Season 4 Mastery for AP Carries or AP Casters Mid. I'm going to do another one on AD Carry, uh, Jungler, Utility Support, and Tanks later on because this video is getting a little bit long. So I'm going to just cut it off here and I'll try and make another one tomorrow.